Hi Stampers, it's Linda Schmidt with Stampin' with the Hounds. Thanks for joining me today. Um, today we are going to be continuing with my Fun Fold series and I am focusing on the Gate Fold cards and showing you all the different versions um, of the Gate Fold that you can use. So if, you if you're new to my channel, make sure you check out my other Fun Fold series. I have one on Gate Fold and I did one on the book binding, and then next, or this month, I guess it's June now, I am gonna be working on, I think, probably some Z fold variations, but I still got a few more gatefold ones that I wanna share with you guys. So this one today that we're gonna be doing is called the Gatefold Explosion. So you're just taking a designer series paper and scoring it so that it gives it that kind of pop out, wow, kind of wow effect, and then it still has that what I call the gatefold for it. So this is one that I did um, a while back. This is using that Xenia um, online exclusive bundle and the des uh, designer series paper. So that's kind of a fun one. And then I did one that I needed for a coworker. So this is a retired set, but I was just playing around with uh, some of my old uh, retired stamps and stuff. And so this is a birthday card that I'm giving to one of my coworkers. So it's another great way of using up some of your uh, retired uh, designer series paper. And it's an, another kind of wow effect uh, card that you can give to people. So what we're gonna be doing today is we are gonna be using the stamp set in the Grove, which is new and the dies that go with it. So this one, so this is a stamp set in the Grove that is new in the catalog, the Stampin' Up! catalog. And this coordinates with the current one that we had for, um, gosh, I feel like it's been a couple of years, um, Grassy Grove. So this coordinates with that in the Grove, which is kind of fun. And then the dies that go with it has this fun little uh, woodland scenery, and then it has these little squirrels and rabbits, and then it also cuts out the fox, and then these all die cut um, the mountains and the grass, and then you can make your own mountains and treeside hill, which I'm gonna be showing you today how to do that. So those are new. And then I'm also showcasing some of our new colors. So this one, this really pretty, it's an ombre um, specialty paper and it has like a little bit of that kind of like a silver foil to it. And this is called Thoughtful Designs and there's uh, variations of colors in there. Like this one has kind of the olive um, and a little bit of like lemon lime twist. And then this one is kind of like that fresh freesia and I would say probably a little, um, one of our new colors, the uh, Petunia Pop kind of coordinates with it. So this is one I did um, recently as a sample. And this one, again, is going to open up. And I did a little bit of ink blending. I had my little die cuts in there. I love that little bunny. <laughs> so that's kind of a fun, fun card. And on this one, I did do a little bit of a tuck. I don't know if I can get it underneath here. There we go. So then it kind of keeps that gate fold closed. So you can kind of do that too. And I just pop that up with the dimensional. So this is another kind of fun one. It does get a little um, thicker, you know, having that uh, explosion card in there. So just be careful when you're doing your layering pieces um, that you may add a little bit of bulk and weight uh, to your card for this one. So again, that's um, one of the samples. And we're gonna do a variation of this one today. And then here's one I just made up this morning. Um, I just love, I love mountains and I love pine trees. <laughs> so this uh, this just called to me. So again, this is using that Thoughtful Designs uh, specialty paper. And then this paper in the background is the Thoughtful Journey, which is another really pretty uh, designer series paper that has beautiful kind of watercolor washed sceneries and they have like all the seasons pretty much through it. So it's just a really pretty, pretty, pretty paper. Love it, love it. And these are like, these are, these are Linda colors. <laughs> I just love all of those. And so on this one, I did do a little bit of the Forever Forest dyes, which coordinates really well with that in the grove. So that's where the rocks and some of these pine trees came from. But the mountain and this tree line, this is from the in the grove and of course the little squirrel and the rabbit. And so on this one, I did a little bit of the um, old, oh gosh, what is it? Old lace. I think that's another uh, designer series paper. So it's kind of a really light 
um, it's that basic beige color, so it's pretty it's pretty subtle um, for it. And then I just kind of did that uh, <clears throat> Thoughtful Journey Designer Series paper on the sides, and then I did some cardstock that I stamped on. So for your greeting, you can either write it here, or you can add another um, layer of cardstock and do your uh, messaging on the back. So either one um, would work, or you can even do it on these little side panels. And then there's my little focal point with the rabbit on there. So that's that one. So super fun. So not too bad for thickness wise. And I think I would I'll have to measure or weigh it, but I think I might be still okay with my postage on it, but fun. And then the one that we're gonna be doing today is this one. And we're gonna do a little bit of ink blending with the new colors. And then I'm gonna show you how to do the die cutting with that in the grove. Um, mountain and the tree scenery and then this is the other new paper uh, this is 12 by 12 and it's that unbounded beauty and it has a lot of the new in colors like the petunia pop the pretty in the pink the summer splash um, uh, gosh what else is there oh the uh, peach pie and then a little bit of the shy shamrock so all of that kind of coordinates so I'm showing you a lot of the new in colors today so that's this one and I did a little bit of ink blending here and then of course, there's my little little bunny. And on this one, I did designer series paper um, for the inside, so that will help kind of reduce the thickness um, too. So instead of doing cardstock, you can do designer series paper here. So that is it. So we're like I said, we're going to do a variation of this one today. So let's get started. So what you'll need for supplies is some designer series paper and you will need to have a 12 by 12 sheet because you have to cut down that explosion to 4 by 8 um, so it doesn't work with the 6 by 6. You, you will need 12 by 12 um, for your pattern paper. So your cardstock base is going to be 5 and a half by 8 and a half and like your standard gate fold um, you're going to score at 2 and an eighth from each end to bring in your uh, your gates for that. And this is the new Petunia Pop uh, cardstock and then your designer series paper for the explosion needs to be four by eight and as I mentioned you're going to be scoring it at two four and six and then we do diagonal making an X on each side and then we fold all the diagonals our valley folds and then the gatefold part, those are going to be mountain. Of course, it's, it's, it, it wants to explode. <laughs> so those kind of come in, but everything else will be uh, valley fold. And then you do not, there's a score line here, but you do not fold on this one. This is where our center, it's going to get covered up. Um, so if you do fold on it, it's not a big deal. But you, you don't need to fold that center one. You're only going to be folding on those two and the six inch and then the diagonal ones. And then when it comes together, you're just kind of squeezing it and then it squishes in and it makes a square on it. And then this way, when it opens, that's how you're getting your, your explosion. So I'll share with you how, you know, we'll go through this step by step. But So there's that, just to give you a quick screenshot of it. All right, then for your front panels, so the front of the card, you can either do designer series paper or cardstock, but if you do cardstock, knowing that it is going to add a little bit of thickness um, to your card. So I'm using designer series paper, and these are going to be, you need two of them, and they're going to be one and seven eighths by five and a quarter. And then if you want to decorate, now I didn't do it on this one, but on my other one, if you want to decorate these panels, that's the same size, the one and seven eighths by five and a quarter. So if you wanted to do that, um, you can do that as well. And then the center piece, you can either do cardstock or designer series paper. I'm doing cardstock, so this is pretty in pink. The color that they had way back when, when I first started was Stampin' Up! 20 some years ago. Um, so it came back as an in color. And what's funny is I still had some of this cardstock laying around. Um, so this is four by five and a quarter. And then the focal point, so I have two layers here. The bottom layer 
is going to be, and you can either do cardstock or designer series paper, it's going to be a square that's two and three quarters by two and three quarters. So I used up some of this old retired, or one of the, well, it's back now, but I mean, uh, I had this on hand, so it was kind of the texturized pretty in pink. I still had it from 10, 15 years ago. Uh, and then your white square or whatever neutral, this is what you're going to be putting your greeting on, or if you want to write on it, you can do that. That's just two and a half by two and a half. All right, and that's all the pieces. So let's get going. Oh, and then whatever you want for your focal um, pieces, I'm doing the um, layered deckled rectangles as my focal point for the um, front of the card. And then I just have some scraps of um, Summer Splash and basic, I've, or basic beige uh, to make my mountains and my tree line. So that's that. So we're gonna first start with the scoring to make the explosion and it's also scoring our um, cardstock or the, the the main card okay so we'll put that aside we need that and this one all right so let me get my simply scored tool out get this stuff out of the way All right, so on, we'll do our card base first. So on this one, again, this was at five and a half by eight and a half. We're gonna score at two and an eighth from each end. So we'll just do two. So there's the two. We're gonna go over one to make it that eighth. And then we're just gonna turn this around and then do two and an eighth as well. Otherwise, if you did you could do two and an eighth and six and three eighths would be the other way of doing it. But sometimes it's just easier just to remember one measurement <laughs> and then just flip it around. Okay, then for our explosion, again, that DSP needed to be four by eight inches. And you're going to score on the side that you want up. So I'm gonna do two inches, four inches, and six inches. And then we have to make the X's. So what you're going to do, and I'm gonna probably have to zoom out just a little bit here so you can, oh, that might be okay. Let's move, shift this around here. So what I do is on my Simply Scored tool, I have a Sharpie marker that I drew down the center and it's just gonna help me line up my points so I can score diagonally. So what I'm doing right now is I am lining up this point, the corner on that line and then where my other score line is, that's getting lined up on the thing as well. So we're making that X and it's gonna be kind of hard to see on, on this, uh, on camera, but so I'm making one diagonal mark, so from the corner down to the second um, score line. Then I'm gonna rotate it, and I'm gonna do from this score line to the other point to make that other diagonal. So I'm going from corner to corner. And now I have an X, and then I've got that horizontal line. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing on this side. So I've got a, there's a score line here. We're gonna go from here to here. That's a corner. So the upper, so the middle to the lower right corner. Let's make sure I'm in there. There we go. And then I'm just gonna turn it. I'm gonna do this corner now down to that middle score line. So point to point. All right, so now we have those two X's. So you've got the X and you've got your score line, the, the, uh, hor or the horizontal one, and then you've got, or not horizontal, uh, vertical, and then you've got your X and then again that other one. Okay, all right, so now we're gonna get folding. So 
So you'll need your bone folder for this one. And sometimes I like to just have my um, silicone mat underneath here as I'm doing this. Okay, so like I said, you want to do these, the two inch and the six inch ones as your mountain folds. We're gonna do that first. And it doesn't really matter. I'm just doing these just to, so those are the mountain. Now we need to do everything else is going to be valley. So I'm going to take doing this diagonal one and you're just going to be making a triangle basically. And then you'll fold on the other one, same thing. Sometimes I like to go over them a couple of times just to make sure that those creases are, are good. Okay, and then backwards, the mountain. Okay, then we're gonna do the same thing on the other one. We're gonna bring these in as valley folds. So we're just gonna make those little triangles. And we'll bring this one in. Okay, so then what you're going to do is you just start kind of squeezing it into place. It'll start to take its shape, and then if you just press it in, you're going to get that little square. And here's just, I just make sure that all of my creases where it's going to lay flat. So this is where you might need your bone folder just to kind of help help it get into place. All right, and then we'll do the same thing on this one, just making sure it's lining up and the folds are good. And then I just take my bone folder and give it a press. And so now you've got your explosion. Yay! Okay, so we're gonna set that aside for now. And then on our card base, we're gonna take where we scored, we're gonna make this our gate fold. And then we're gonna fold this one in. And then I always just kinda of make sure, sometimes you have to, I want these middle pieces to really hold in place. So I'm going to take my bone folder again and then just kinda of force it so that it's meeting in the middle very well. Okay, so that's that part. So let's go ahead and add our panels. So again, these were the one and seven eighths by um, five and a quarter. And I don't know if I had, I was thinking when I cut this, if it, it made a difference. I might've just grabbed, oh, I think this was it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we're going to, so yeah, so if you do your designer series paper, make sure your pattern is continuous um, going across because you do see the panels when they're closed. Um, you want it to look like it's a continuous um, sheet of paper. All right, so that's going to go on the front panel. Yeah, this thoughtful journey paper is so pretty. I love anything that has like a watercolor wash look to it. All right, then I'm gonna add, let's see, I think I'm gonna wait and add that. We're gonna do our stamping. Yeah, so let's do our stamping first and then I'll show you how to assemble that for the part. Because we're gonna do a little bit of ink blending and I'm gonna show you how to do the die cutting uh, for that mountain scene. So for the ink blending, what I did is I took the Pretty in Pink uh, Petunia Pop and then the Summer Splash were my colors. And then as you blend, you get this really pretty kind of violet color uh, between the green and the, and the pink, so that's kind of nice. And then I'm gonna show you how to do that, the die cutting there. So we're gonna start with the rectangle dies. And I did, I believe it was, Oh, here it is. I think it's the third. Yeah, it was the one, two, three, fourth largest. 
is the one that I did. I did fourth and fifth um, from that for my sizes. And that's what my white is going to be. And then I also am using this to help keep that die cutting look on these um, on the tree line when I do that. So I'll show you how to, I did that as well. But we're going to start with the ink blending. So we're, I'm going to do the summer splash. And we're going to do the petunia pop. And then the pretty in pink. So I didn't need a peach one. All right. Get this down a little bit. Okay. And then our brushes. So I'm going to start with the pink first at the bottom. And I'm using, so these are the um, new smaller blending brushes. I mean, either one works, but sometimes I do like when it's a smaller piece of paper um, using the, the little smaller brush head. So that's kind of just showing you the, the difference um, between them. So I'm going to do the pink. And when you use your brushes, you want to make sure that you're resting your index finger on that brush head um, just so that you're not putting all the pressure and then um, you don't want this to break, <laughs> basically. So kind of hold on to that brush head. And then I just kind of tap on the ink pad. And before I add it onto the card stock, I use my silicone mat and I tap off a little bit. And then I start on the silicone mat and then I come onto the card stock. And you're always working in a singular motion. And then eventually you're just kind of bringing that color up the card stock, but you're working in that circular motion going back and forth. All right, so there's the pink. Then I'm gonna come in with the Petunia Pop. And again, I'm gonna kind of tap off first to get some of that ink um, off of it. And then I'm gonna start on the silicone mat and then come onto the cardstock. And this is what helps to avoid getting the, like the big blotches um, so you see you get like another kind of color between when the pink and the petunia pop meet each other. So just going back, back and forth, get it all blended nicely. All right, and then we're going to do the summer splash for the last one. So again, I'm going to tap off. I'm going to start on that silicone mat and then work my way onto the cardstock. So now as you come on to that petunia, you're getting that really pretty violet color. So you can come down as far as you want to get those um, that other blended color. And then of course the more, more you blend, the darker the ink is going to get. Alright, so then once you're happy, and that's our beautiful kind of like Northern Lights skyline. All right, and then I just take a damp cloth and I wipe off some of this extra ink off of my silicone mat so I don't transfer it onto my card. And then your brushes, um, you can, you know, if you've got other projects, you know, just set them aside. Otherwise, just rinse them out um, with some water. You can also spray rubbing alcohol on it and then use like a microfiber brush um, to clean it um, is another way of doing it too. So but I'm just going to put these back in my little stand. All right. And then the other thing, so that's going to be on are outside. I want to do my stamping for my inside. I'm going to change it up a little bit from what I had in my um, sample because I had done the ink blending in that sample, but this time I'm going to do the stamping from the um, In the Grove stamp set. So we're going to be using the, it's kind of like the field. And what's kind of cool about this um, stamp is you can stamp it. So this is the the uh, top. You can stamp it this way and then you can also re-ink it and then go and do 
the bottom. Either way, um, either way works, which is kind of um, when you're layering and stuff. So I'm going to do summer splash. So I'm going to make a field of flowers. So as you're doing this, you want to make sure that this focal point, notice how it's kind of like a diamond. You want to make sure when you're stamping that whatever, if you have like a greeting, that you're stamping it so that it's like a diamond. So I'm going to do my, like I said, I'm going to do my flower field. So I'm going to do one stamp and then I want to fill this in. So I'm going to re-ink it. I'm going to turn it upside down and then I'm going to stamp again. And now I've continued on with my field. And then in this stamp set, there's this little, and it kind of looks like leaves or like it could be footprints. I'm going to do these as my flowers that I'm going to stamp on top of the, the, the summer splash. And I'm going to do a couple different colors. I'm going to start with the pretty in pink. Actually, no, I'm going to do the petunia pop first. So we'll do a little bit of petunia pop and I'm just going to stamp these going across. And I'm going to clean my stamp. And then I'm going to do pretty in pink. And I'm going to shift it over a little bit so that I'm not stamping in the same spot. So I'm getting those two colors showing through. So now there's our field of flowers. And then for my saying, where did that stamp go? Oh, here it is. I think this will still fit in here. Yeah, I think for that, just to pop this so it shows, I may just use like a gray, I'm thinking. So let's do, let's do basic gray for our sing. Yeah, oh yeah, I think it'll be, that'll be fine. Okay, I'll clean that up so I don't get that on there. Oh, and I got a little little boo boo with my ink here. So I'm just using a little sand eraser to um, remove the ink. I had a little blob. So this just kind of sands away the cardstock, and then I just take my adhesive remover just to smooth it out. So two little tips, <laughs> just getting these, and I just got these off of Amazon. Um, the sand erasers are from Tombow. And then this um, I've had for, my God, 20 years. <laughs> but you can get it at any um, art supply um, store too. All right, so let's do our saying. And this saying is actually from the new set Sketched Butterflies, which I just got um, Friday. So I'll be doing um, some samples uh, with this set that's brand new. I haven't had a butterfly set in forever. <laughs> it's been years since I bought one. All right, so let's go ahead and put this in the center. There we go. All right. And then that's going to get layered onto our two and three quarter inch square, uh, pretty in pink, that I used for my cardstock. And like I said, you, if you wanted to do designer series paper, um, you don't have to double layer if you don't want to. I just like giving it a little bit more color. And then we'll bring back our explosion piece. So you want to kind of do this ahead of time before you assemble this onto your card. It just makes it a little bit easier to adhere this um, into the explosion before it's attached to the card. Oh, I did it again. Why is my problem? Oh, some days. I'm like, is it on my hand? <laughs> yeah, my order that came Friday. Oh my gosh, the Summer Splash ink refill it had leaked. <laughs> there was green ink everywhere. But luckily nothing was um, ruined. But yeah, it was, it was all over my hands as I was trying to clean it up. All right, so again, this is going to go in that center piece. So again, we, we didn't fold on that center score line. Um, but if you do, if you forget, it is covered up, so it doesn't make a difference. But you don't need a fold on that score, that center one. Okay, so now there is our explosion. So we'll bring back our card. Yep, and then this pink will go in here. 
but I think I want to stamp on this before I do that. I'm going to do a real quick mountain in the pretty and pink on the pretty and pink. So I'm just doing monochromatic. So I'm going to take the mountains and I'm just going to do these like right at the bottom just to give it a little, a little something, something. So on these bigger stamps, I like to take the ink pad to the stamp rather than trying to put it on the ink pad and make a mess. So I'm just going to do this right at the bottom just to give it a little, a little pop of color since I didn't do designer series paper down here. Now this can be attached to the inside of our card. So again, this is just four by five and a quarter. And then like I said, if you wanted to decorate and do the panels with designer series paper, you can, that would be one and seven eighths by five and a quarter. So you would put those in now but if you don't, then you can go on to the next step. So now we're going to actually attach our explosion to the card, to the inside of the card. So I line up, let me have to stand so I can see this here. So if you use your grid, I'm just making sure that my point is, because I want to have room, I should move this down here. Um, I want to have room down here for my to write something, so that's why I'm not putting this straight in the center. I'm kind of aligning this explosion part to the top of my inside card layer. So I'm just making sure that that point is straight. Straight. Okay, so that looks good. So then I'm just going to add adhesive on half of this. And you can either use liquid glue um, or just, you know, your normal adhesive. You can use tear and tape if you want. And then I'm going to bring this in. So again, another thing too to look at, you want to make sure that these points are not impeding the gatefold. I think I'm, I think I'm okay. So I'm going to bring this in. And then I just like to take my bone folder and just kind of give it a, a good swipe over just to make sure that it's attached. So now that's attached to that part. Then what I like to do next is that then I'm going to put adhesive on the back so that it's attached to the inside of the card. And then we'll do the, the next flap. Oops. And then this one, I just bring this all in and I just close it. So now it's attached to the inside of the card. And then now we're gonna put tape on this left triangle And then I just close this down. And again, I just give it a good swipe. And now your explosion is attached. Fun, love it. <laughs> All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna create our little mountain scene. So I have, this is going to get attached onto the next size larger um, white cardstock. So I've got that already die cut. But I do want to cut out my mountains and my tree line. So I just have, I think I did these as two and a quarter inch squares. So one is Summer Splash and one is the um, Basic Beige, which is our, one of our new neutrals. And we're going to use our little handy dandy stamp and cut machine. And I am going to pull out just a little bit here so you can see better. All right. So on this one, I will need some low tack tape here. So we are going to use our Mountain Skyline die 
and we're going to do the tree line die. So I will do the, I think I'm gonna do the mountains first. All right, so with the mountain, I think, let's see how far up did I go? About there. Still go a little bit higher. Yeah, that should be good. Okay, so I position it. So this is only really cutting a line. It's not going to um, cut out a shape per se. It's just kind of doing that skyline. And then I like to use just a little bit of low tack tape just to hold this in place while I run it through the machine. And on the little stamping cut, I do like to offset my plates a little bit. It just helps it feed through um, the machine easier. And then I like to always have my silicone mat underneath this as well. Um, it does help kind of prevent this from shifting around, especially when you're working on a glass mat. Okay, so there is mountain. So it just cuts this away. And now there's your mountain. Now we're going to do our tree line. Same thing. Our tree line. And this one I do like to sometimes just kind of put it on a little crooked so that it's kind of going from high to low. And I think that will be pretty good. Okay, so same thing. Put this down. We're just going to hold it in place so it doesn't shift. Now you have your tree line, which then will be attached to the bottom of our mountains. But I want to, because I want this to be matching up with that deckled edge. So what I did is I take the rectangle die, which was the same size as my focal point. And I'm wondering, maybe I should go, oh no, that should be fine. Okay, this one, I didn't know if I needed to make this a little bit thicker. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lay this down and then I'm just putting just the bottom part of this die lined up with the cardstock, just so that I'm getting that deckled edge on the bottom. Just want it just on there. And this is totally optional. This is again just Linda being <laughs> Linda being a perfectionist. Uh, it's all about the details on my card. Alright. And that is it for the die cutting. So now we have our deckled edge on the bottom of that so it kind of matches so it just did us a really thin thin cut okay so that again was the mountain die and then the tree line score line or the tree line die okay so now we can go ahead and Attach all of this so I can zoom back in. Oops. Probably did it a little too far, sorry. There we go. 
Or, yeah, now I made y'all seasick. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna use a little bit of my liquid glue for this part. So we'll go ahead and attach this. Yeah, this summer splash, it's a really pretty color. So it is, um, compared to Coastal Cabana, I feel like this is a little darker. Um, I can turn this around now. Yeah, it's just a little bit, oh wait, that might be Summer Splash, sorry, take that back. Oh yeah, here's my Coastal Cabana. Yeah, it's a little bit darker. The Summer Splash is just a titch darker. All right, so we're gonna attach this right on to our mountain die. And it looks like I need to just trim my mountain just a titch here. So I'm just gonna freehand it with my scissors here. Just... There we go. And then that will be attached onto our skyline. And then I already die cut a bunch of the trees and stuff from the Forever Forest dies. And I'm gonna do the Shy Shamrock for my tree. And then we'll do one of our little one of our little squirrels. Let's do we'll do the one that's in the gray. Cute. Alright. Go ahead and attach this. And with this mountain, um, I did it on my, uh, on this one. When you die cut this, you know, these pieces come out. You can keep those and then insert them into, you know, like here. So I did my mountain cut out in boho blue. And then at those pieces that came out of here, I glued them in. So you can do that to do a little bit of like puzzle, puzzle piecing um, with your die cuts too. But on this one, I just I left it as is. So we'll go ahead and attach that. And then our tree that's in that shy shamrock color, so it's more of a green compared to the summer splash. So I wanted a little bit of a contrast. And then our little squirrel him and this was the I think this might have been pebbled path now that I look at it I think that's pebbled path cardstock all right so now this can be attached onto the other layered deckled uh, rectangle and I just did uh, the basic white and I did the thicker cardstock because I want it to have a little bit of uh, weight because this is going to be off only adhere to half of the card and then we have to have a little bit of bling on our card and these are the new um, in color the shimmer gems they're so pretty oh I can get it open They've got all the the in colors and I'm just going to do I think a variety of colors maybe so we'll do a little bit of the we'll do a little shy shamrock maybe we'll do a little bit of the pretty and pink and then I think a petunia pop Place that. So you always want to think of like a triangle when you're doing this. Oops, and I just dropped my gem. There we go. Oops, I got a little. Oh, didn't want to stick on there.
Come on. Let's try that again. There we go. All right, so there's our gems. Now, when you go to put this on your card, you're only putting adhesive on half of it. So what I like to do is, this is my um, way I want it. I'm just going to flip this upside down. And now I know, I can kind of see where I need to put my adhesive. So as long as I stay here, I'm within that panel. And for this part, I do like to use tear and tape um, just to make sure that it doesn't fall off my card front. And then I just use my pick tool to remove the adhesive backing. And then making sure you're putting your card together right side, <laughs> not upside down. I had uh, my class on, I had two classes this week, in-person classes, and the one lady, she got all done and she stamped her greeting upside down on the inside of her card. But we were able to fix it, so. All right, so that is the Gatefold Explosion card. So thanks again for joining me today. Um, stay tuned for some other um, Gatefold. I've got one more I think I'm going to do, maybe two. I haven't decided. <laughs> There's so many of them. Um, so stay tuned for that. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Uh, so that way you get notified when I um, upload new tutorials. And then I will put links um, in the description down below to the other gatefold um, cards that I've done. And then you also want to check out those book binding fun folds because um, I did a whole series on that fold as well. So thanks again for watching. Um, have a great and creative day and I will stamp again with you soon. Bye-bye.